Shalom, Yasharala, Shalom. It's the brother Ash Iba coming back in spirit, giving all praises to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. And a mighty Shalom to you, brothers, to you elders, pushing the truth across the four winds of the earth. Calm, Yasharala, peace, peace and blessings be unto the hopeful elect, man. And I want to get into this lesson. Um, it's titled Blessed are Your Eyes for They See, Blessed are Your Ears for They Hear. Because, you know, I was on the phone with a brother last night and I was just telling him, you know, that the world don't really understand it. See, you coming into the truth as a man, you coming into the truth as a woman to get the understanding and the Lord to be blessing you with, you know, certain discernment to be able to understand the things that the vast majority of people on earth have no clue. You are truly blessed. If you brothers go on Instagram, if you brothers go on YouTube, if you brothers go on Twitter and you leave outside of the world of people who understand that they're Israel, you will notice that the vast majority of people think we're crazy, we're conspiracy theorists, we're extremists, we're national black terrorists, we're all these things, right? But they just quite frankly don't understand it. And you as a brother, you as a sister, you have to have faith to the point where all these people who are constantly detracting you aren't going to pull you away. Because it's only going to get worse. As time and time passes by, there's going to be more vitriol, more hatred, more castigating, more uh, slander. To the point where it's going to lead up to the fact that they're going to try to kill and persecute us. And you got to have enough faith to stand by that and not care about the cares of this world in order for you to make it. As Yahweh Shai said, he who saveth his life will lose it. And he who will lose his life for my name's sake shall find it. And I want to read this parable. This is, my, this is probably my most favorite parable that Yahweh Shai spoke. This is the book of Matthew chapter 13 verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest you unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever has not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they seeing not and hearing not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah was saying, by hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them this is a beautiful 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 you know um you know a uh, statement that yahweh shai said because the vast majority of our people are under spiritual blindness and spiritual deafness you know it's actually a curse we can get that in the book of deuteronomy chapter 28 and we can go down to verse let me see things 28 29 it says, and you shall grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness, and you shall not prosper in thy way, and you shall be only oppressed and spoiled evermore, and no man shall save you. And when you look at groping at noonday, noonday is when the sun is at the highest point in the earth, right? It's its brightest day, right? But it says you will grope, meaning you will complain in the middle of the day as the blind who gropes in darkness. And what this is talking about, because a blind man complains that he can't see, right? He's in total darkness. Well, you're going to be somebody who can see things as plain as day, but you won't be able to actually see it. And this will cause you to not prosper. This will cause you to be oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man will be able to save you from that spiritual blindness. And when you brothers go through these through these uh, pictures with me, you'll see how obvious it is that we can see these things, but how, you know, uh, blinded and ignorant the vast majority of our people are because the Lord it's just not dealing with them on that level. And it's sad to see, you know, you got these people complaining about why this, why can't we get ahead? Why can't we do this? Why can't we do that? It needs to be the same people reading the Bible, going to church every weekend. But for whatever reason, the Lord is just keeping them away from the true understanding. That's why you brothers got to, you know, stay in this truth. That's why the scriptures say buy the truth and sell it not to store up your treasures, which, which are in heaven, because the thing that you get, it can't be quantified on this side. But it's above anything, a woman, a car, a house, a trip to buy, uh, Cancun. Man, don't none of that matter outside of you getting this true and proper understanding. You have to get the true and proper understanding and get your soul right with your howl 
and then once you get your soul right and you can stay in that in that certain state then you work on things in the world use the world not abuse it but understand that the world to come is always above this world here so let's get into some of these uh images right so i was just typing in hebrew israelite <laughs> and this is basically somebody that had, uh posted the difference between an israelite and a hamite you see what i'm saying because you know you understand how esau has done he's basically grouped all dark skin color to be quote unquote black when black means death and there are many different darker skin tone people even when you look at the elamites in like india a lot of them are just as dark as us them dark darkest but they don't look nothing like us right but when you look and you truly understand the difference between the africans not all africans but you know those who come from the seed line of ham the kushites the uh, canaanites etc etc you'll see that we don't all look alike even when you go to east eastern africa right the eastern africans look different from you know the central africans and the central africans look different from the west africans because the vast majority of our people who came from africa are mostly in nigeria mali um you know liberia algeria etc 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 so basically they're saying she said laugh out loud she said look in the mirror Americans dot 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 Africans we can see a difference and to be quite honest with you there's no such thing as Americans or Africans those are terms just you know uh, used to describe the different land masses the people and where they're stationed at right but you know let's look at this because when I first came into truth I thought that the Hamites was also the Israelites and one of one of my brothers he's like hey nah nah we're completely different when you look at our shape when you look at our appearance we're not the same and let's look into some of these pictures right so you see, you got the, the light copper coated, you know, like the copper of a penny. And then you got burnt, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no disrespect, but I mean, when you look at the two, they're completely different. Like if you brothers watch basketball, brother look like Dennis Schroeder. So you brothers got to understand, Africa is a huge landmass, dog. Africa is the second largest landmass on earth. So not everybody who lives in Africa is derived from the same seed. And y'all brothers understand that a lot of our peoples were ruling in Europe. And a lot of our people were ruling in the Aboriginal Americas, right? North and South America and Central America. So when it comes to the getting this understanding, you can clearly see the difference between the two. This is a Jake. You know what I'm saying? This is, it looked like, it, and obviously you don't bet, judge every Israelite based off the appearance. But when you see the stereotypical appearance of a so-called black man, right? A so-called African-American man, you can tell the difference. He got like a peanut head. Like, you know what I'm saying? He got like a little peanut head. He has a more round, around facial structure. He has lighter skin. You know, let's get let's get some more. Kevin Durant. You see, he looked like Bol Bo off of uh, the Nuggets. Bol Bo and then uh, his 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 uh, his uh, son, right? And, and, and obviously, bro, I'm gonna be real. The Hamites is a lot darker than us, bro. Hamites are a lot darker than us. Usually, Jakes have a more round, not a round, more of a more square type of head. You see what I'm saying? And you know, continue on. Jew African Noah, the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negroes, but the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Libyans, and Canaanites. So basically, what they're speaking on in regards to the quote unquote dark races, because you got to understand with Esau's uh, information and the way he likes to deceive, he's basically switched everything up. He's basically said that all the so called blacks are this. Are of the seed of ham you've seen certain videos of people mocking about how the bible isn't for is, is only for the jews not the hamites and then there was one one uh edomite who said huh, including you so-called black including the black including black people right not realizing that <laughs> the seed of ham and the seed of shem are two completely different seed lines because abraham isaac and jacob came through the seed of shem which is where the 12 patriarchs of jacob originated from right but the seed of Ham, you had what? You had Cush and you had Nimrod. And Cush had a lot of other sons. Nimrod had sons. And their seed line spread predominantly through Africa, down south. You know, but even throughout time, all of the peoples have migrated throughout every different corner of the earth. So you can't really base it off of a landmass. You can only base it off of lineage. You can base it off of appearance. And of course, in this time, because a lot of our seed have been you know sold amongst the tares you base it off of the spirit based off base it off the understanding base it off the spiritual curses that you know certain people fit when it comes to the bible and also you base it off the prophecy again one one key aspect 
of understanding the truth about Jake's compared to the Hamites is that Jake's the north the two kingdoms would be in the same land underneath their oppressors and i'm not sitting here saying that you know hamites don't go through things i mean they got the curse of ham on them you see what i'm saying but at the end of the day the prophecy that's been foretold for them is completely different from the prophecy foretold of the people of the book you know what i mean so you know one thing that i've just been noticing on on twitter First and foremost, as they said, this is Hebrew nonsense. Because again, they love to group you as black. Because if they can group you as black, they can group you as African and call you a Hamite, right? That's why when you look at a lot of these images, they're gonna say black, 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 right? Now, uh, let's let's go let's go into this, right? Because this one is funny. So you know, like I said, I was just going through different tweets and whatnot, and this is one dude. His name Johnny Conchero. He probably a so-called black man. He probably a Jake. Who knows? But it said these movements to erase black American identity from flat blackness to Aboriginal American shit to Hebrew Israelites is supported by the feds. And it should be very clear. Now, basically what he's saying, changing, you know, so-called black people from black to being the Aboriginal Americans, you know, the people who were here before Esau came. To eventually saying that you're the Hebrew Israelites is supported by the feds. Now, does that make any sense, bro? Again, he don't got the eyes to see and the ears to hear. He don't got the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Let's pull this up back in, in uh, Matthew 13, right? This is Matthew chapter 13. And we'll go to verse, like verse 18. Hear you therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth the way that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside, meaning he received seed, but it wasn't planted into any soil. You know what I mean? The wicked one took away the seed before it could be planted and it could be rooted. And that could be a brother may stumble upon a, a video, a brother may see a brother at a camp, a brother may read something in a book, but then but then Satan, he'll find a device to take you away. You, you'll go back on TV Jakes and they'll say, oh, you know, God loves everybody. Or, you know, you look up black Hebrew Israelites and then you see cult, 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 cult. Because they do it on purpose. Because to be quite honest with you, the Lord doesn't want all Israel to be saved. Again, only a remnant will be saved. So at the end of the day, the Lord picks who he wants to get the understanding and who he doesn't want to get the understanding. So getting back to the main point, let me uh, close these images real quick. Getting back to the main point. For him to sit here and say that the Aboriginal Americans and that the Hebrew Israelites is supported by the Fed, that's not true at all. Now, is it true that Esau Edom has his hand and that there's certain men who are crept unaware? Yeah, of course. Let's get this in uh, the book of Jude and we'll go to uh, uh, verse 7. Or Salaki, we'll go to uh, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unaware who are before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord into lasciviousness and denying the only power uh, in our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, that how the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. So you got to understand that there's certain men who are crept unaware, certain agents. We're not going to get into who those people are because at the end of the day, we won't fully know for certain until the end times or until, you know, times when things get real bad and they getting saved and nothing happening to them. But they bringing up their, their you know, selling out their congregation, they selling out their family, they selling out their brotherhood. But there are some, certain men who are crept in unaware who are working with Esau Edom. But for you to sit here and say that Esau Edom... <laughs> is funding the hebrew israelites that makes no sense but see he doesn't understand prophecy because if he understood prophecy and he understood the words of well yeah how was i mashiach said how the last would be first and the first would be last you as a jake you as a so-called black man should pray that the hebrew israelite movement is true that the aboriginal american movement i mean the aboriginal americans are so-called blacks is true because then you'll understand what your heritage is for you to sit here and say you're black the color of death you're a slave and you were in subjection of your ruler and you to sit here and say that that was your history, it shows how foolish you are. Compared to when somebody said, hey, you know that, you know that so-called black people rule Europe for the vast majority of, of, of uh, you know, the time after Mashiach, from around 300, 400 AD, all the way up until 16, 1700 AD. Did you know that? Did you know we ruled and we had the so-called white men 
as as as, as slaves and as servants that they were in the Caucasus Mountains. They couldn't they couldn't even bathe. They couldn't do anything. That uplifts your people. Why do you think Esau you know, makes it such a a blatant move? to slander us and destroy our history because if we understand who we really are then we understand the truth just like when uh deshaun jackson and there's actually a, a, a tweet that i'm gonna get onto about that a little bit later how he stated that uh screenshot of the book and it's not a real book but it was a statement made by allegedly by hitler saying that um you know the negroes i mean the negroes are the israelites when you hear things like that, that uplifts you because that shows you that you're royalty and it allows you to have more faith. When you read a book that says you are blessed above all, you are chosen above all, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the earth, you are a nation of priests and kings, that uplifts your spirit to help you understand who you really are. Because once you really understand who you really are, then Esau Edom's time is up. So anybody sitting here saying that the Aboriginal American and the Hebrew Israelite is supported by the feds, meaning that they want this to go on, they want this to happen, you're a fool. Why do you think they hired so many agents? Why do you think you, they got Vocab Malone, who's a paid agent, and allegedly he said it out of his own mouth that I think he's either paid from the cabal or the Vatican because he had an FBI background. Why would they want to support something like that? To allow people to come back to their true understanding of who they are in the Bible and to come back to their power. Because you understand that when the Israelites had Yahweh behind them, nobody could defeat them, right? Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy and we'll go to chapter 20. And this is Esau Edom's worst nightmare. This is Deuteronomy. Um, we'll go to chapter uh, 20 and we'll start at verse 2. And it shall come to pass when you are come near unto battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people. And shall say unto them, Hear, O Israel, you approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For Yahweh, your power is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. So when brothers understand that you have an immovable force, when brothers understand you have a have an omnipresent, omnipotent, all-powerful creator that's behind his people above all else, nobody can stop that. Come on, man. So anybody sitting here saying that the movement is supported by, by the government, by the so-called white man's government, you're a fool, man. Let's get this in uh, Isaiah real quick. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. And this is obviously talking about woe unto them who call wickedness good and good wickedness. But this can also be in relation to those who call something that's truly giving you life evil, just like the same people. Let's, let's also get this in the book of Matthew, chapter 12, verse 25. Because this spirit is always going to be around Israel. This is Matthew chapter 12. I read verse 24. When the Pharisees heard that he did this miracle, they said, This fellow does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Yahweh knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then shall his kingdom stand? So when you read about what happened with Yahweh shot and the Pharisees, the Pharisees tried to slander the power of Yahweh that was given through the spirit and which which allowed Yahweh shot to perform miracles. That's why he said that that sin cannot be forgiven, the blaspheme of the Holy Spirit, right? But he was saying, if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand, right? So when it comes to this, basically what he's saying is how can the kingdom stand if it's constantly at war and constantly against one another? So when it comes to, and let me read verse 27, it says, And if I, Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the spirit of Yahweh, then the kingdom of Yahweh is come unto you. And a lot of us, when it, and we're not getting literal miracles and, uh, you know, literal spirits being cast out of us through somebody coming to us and laying hands or doing something like that. But through the word, through Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai's word, He's casting out those unclean spirits. He's cleansing us through his word. He's cleansing us, he's cleansing us through his understanding. He's placing his spirit upon us and he's performing literal miracles to have the people who are at the bottom of the bottom and lost above all to slowly rise up to come into their fullness, right? So how could Esau be wanting a movement in which many brothers and sisters are getting blessed, getting understanding and coming back to their life? Because you gotta understand the law, statutes and commandments are life. So that doesn't make any sense. And it shows you 
the foolishness of some of our people and is sitting here saying that the Hebrew Israelites are cold and the Hebrew Israelites is a doctrine of devils. You have no understanding on what you're talking about. And the vast majority of people who are ignorant to this are gonna continue to fall for the lie that Esau Edom has spewed in the narrative of what this truth is really about. Now I'm gonna read this one right here. So this is a sister who said, I denounce my letters, no longer a member of AKA, which is a sorority. All praises to the most high. You got this, <laughs> you know, you know, I got a Jake out there saying, nah, she left a sorority. Now she left a sorority cult to join a religious cult. The sheep will follow whoever has a doctrine and ready to lead them. And if I could interact with this brother, my question would be, what do you believe in? I, what, what you believe in, bro? You believe that we all came from Kemet? You believe that we, we should worship Isis, Ra, and El? You believe that the black woman is God? That we have we control our own destiny what do you believe in bro do you believe in christianity see a lot of these people will sit here and say all these things and slander and slander and slander but they have no understanding on who they are they fought they worship the white man they, they listen to everything he say they take the jab and next thing you know they finna take the motb right so at the end of the day he's trying to slander a woman from leaving a literal cult well i mean not a cult but a literal sorority which, which literally, when it comes to that, they worship Greek. They they venerate Greek and Roman gods. She was committing spiritual idolatry, and to at least getting some type of understanding on who she really is. But again, what did it say? The wicked one cometh up and uprooted anybody who hears the word of Yahweh. So at the end of the day, he sees it as oh, she was taken up by Satan. But those who truly understand what this truth is really about. They understand that the Lord has called her out of the world. Let's get this real quick. We'll get uh, John chapter 10. This is the book of John chapter 10. We'll go to verse um, 26. But you believe not because you are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. And a lot of y'all brothers is wondering, like, why, wow, like, you know, I've had so many obstacles. I've had so many things being said about this movement, whether people saying you're crazy or conspiracy theorists and all these things. And the fact that you brothers have been in this thing for five years, two years, however long you've been in is a true blessing. Because at the end of the day, the sheep of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, the sheep of Yahweh Shah will always hear his voice and will always understand what's real from what's fake. Let me see, Salakia. I'm going to get the scripture. I think it's in Jeremiah where it says they will hear a voice behind them saying this is the way. Behind them. Yeah, this is it right here. Let's go to Isaiah. And we'll go to chapter 30. And we'll go to verse 21. It says, And your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk you in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. So what this is speaking on is you got to put pick the symbology of us being lost in this great sea of the world. Us being lost sheep uh, gone away from the pasture, right? We're lost. We don't know where to go. We're just blindly following other people, bl blindly following philosophies. When we hear that word, we hear that voice, that's the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai telling us, stay away from that. Stay away from the Christian church. Stay away from the Catholic church. A lot of y'all brothers just clicked on a video on YouTube and got the understanding. That's how I came into the truth. I clicked on a video on YouTube, a random video, and I ended up searching and searching and searching and realizing, wow, this is the actual truth. That was that voice in my, that was the voice telling me where to go. So a lot of brothers and sisters are being wakened up through the spirit, literally through the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, man. So, you know, that brother can't see it and that brother can't understand it. And when you tell your family about the truth, they'll always constantly talk about it and say, you, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't really know what you're a part of. And they always talk about it because that's just Satan putting a, a, a perverse spirit unto those who the Lord is calling into this thing. So it's just kind of funny to see that because at the end of the day, you know, that's a, that's the ultimate blessing. That, that she left a sorority to come into a to a the Hebrew Israelite. Cause sororities, bro, they do all type of wickedness, bro. Lesbianism, you know, uh, you know, a lot of them dudes be training the women. A lot of dudes gotta do homosexual acts. 
You know what I'm saying? They, they follow all these pagan religions. Anybody who's in a sorority or fraternity, you are literally one step below becoming a Freemason or, you know, joining a lot of these um, secret society clubs all throughout America, like the Freemasons, the Boule members. And when you look at all these famous athletes and these famous um, entertainers, usually when they went to college, they joined a sorority, especially uh, our people, you know, like Shaq, Charles Barkley, Michael Jordan, uh, Stephen A. Smith. They were all in the same sorority. I mean, it's like the same fraternities. And look where they at now. They're prominent, but you don't know what they do behind the scenes. You don't know the amount of um, veneration towards these false gods that they have to partake in. You don't know a lot of them dark themes that they have to do to rise up the ladder. So at the end of the day, the true sheep of Yahweh Shai will hear his voice and follow it. You see what I mean? <laughs> Now let's continue on with this madness, right? <laughs> Dude said, and this is another Jake, said the black Hebrew Israelites who preach hatred for white people, for the state of Israel, and for non-black Latino Jews, fake Jews, are a religious cult that is leading many astray. That is the tweet. You always hear these people say that we're fake Jews, we're of the synagogue of Satan. If you brothers Google a lot of these Christian uh, movements and they speak on us, right? They say that we're the synagogue of Satan. They say we're the Pharisees. They say that we're the Revelation to the Niners. And, you know, like I said, bro, it, it, it's comedy. You know, when you see stuff like that, it's comedy because it's like, man, you couldn't be further away from the truth. Let's get that. Revelation 2, and we'll go to verse 9. I know your works in tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of them would say they are Jews and are not but are of the synagogue of Satan. And most people, when they read this, they have no clue what that means. But as the Hebrew Israelite movement, as the Israelite, it's not even a movement, it's just an awakening, it's like you. As you know, our people continue to be awakened, there's gonna be more and more slander. People are gonna start to see, oh, in Revelation it says that there are some people who are the synagogue of Satan that claim that they're Jews, but they hate everybody. That's them, that's them. And that's how a lot of this persecution is gonna rise up, man. It's not just him that said that, right? Let's look at this one. You got a, uh, this is somebody responding to what happened with Deshaun Jackson. Remember how Deshaun Jackson, he made that uh, post last year or the year before, I think it was 2020, about how he uh, posted like a, a quote from, an alleged quote from Hitler, even though if you brothers research on it, it wasn't a real actual book, but they said that it was a member of the Hebrew, the Hebrew Israelites who wrote the book. So let's read it. It says, Deshaun posted a quote from a book written by a member of an anti-Semitic quasi-religious group called the Black Hebrew Israelites. Think Nation of Islam on race conspiracy steroids. In his defense, he apologized, connected with Julian Edelman and a 94-year-old Holocaust survivor. So basically, y'all brothers understand how Deshaun was castigated, how he was, uh, I wanna say he was blacklisted, but he was severely reprimanded for his quote-unquote anti-Semitic statements. When in actuality, he never said anything that was false. Now, he quoted a source from a book that wasn't from Hitler, you know. But at the end of the day, he never said anything that was wrong because the Negroes are the Israelites of the Bible. It's that simple, man. It's literally that simple. So you're seeing a lot of people saying that we're fake Jews. We preach hatred for white people, blah, 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 blah. They, they continue to castigate us and spread lies. And you notice one thing with these people, they never deal with nationality. They never deal with your seed line. But they deal with generalizations like black, white. You see what I'm saying? So anti-Semitic, because those are all things to use that are being used to manipulate the sheeple and the people who aren't meant to get it to continue to castigate us and to hate us, right? And also right here, and this is this is the stupidest thing I ever seen. Here you got this damn. I think this is a. I don't know if this is a Jew. Look like he got a Jew. Dude is throwing up the devil horn, man. The monocornuto, man. I think it's either the monocornuto or the other sign, but I just call it the devil horns, right? So it says to claim that the black Hebrew Israelites are simply healthy living enthusiasts is like describing Bill Cosby as an avid mixologist. Basically, people will sit here and believe and listen to what this man says when this man is literally throwing up a sign for the devil. When he's throwing up a sign uh, or for uh, the Baphomet, man. I mean, it, it's... But you, again, when you brothers have eyes to see and ears to hear, and I'll be the first to tell you, I'm not the most studious, educated, uh, you know, brother in this thing. There's brothers who can break down every symbol, brothers who can break down every sign, brothers who can read precepts and know it like the back of my head, back of their head. But at the end of the day, the only thing that you need is you need the eyes to see and the ears to hear. 
to truly understand the scriptures and to do the things necessary to make your calling and election sure. So if you have some sort of sight, some, some sort of hearing to be able to see the enemy, to be able to see who's the true, you know, the true, um, how do I put it? The true hero per se, the true savior per se, the true understanding of what the Bible and what this world are actually about. Because once you get that understanding, and you're rooted in that, nobody's gonna take you off. Somebody who's weak minded, somebody who's new to the truth will see this and be like, oh, I don't wanna be castigated by my daddy, Esau and Edom. Oh, I don't want people to think I'm in a cult. Oh, I don't want people to think I'm ignorant or foolish. Look, man, if you read these scriptures, you understand these scriptures, you understand these videos. You are blessed above all. That's why Yahweh Shah said, blessed are you for your eyes and your eyes for they see, and blessed are your ears for they hear. And when you brothers come in this thing, and you read a lot of these scriptures and these understandings, especially in the gospel, Yahweh Shai, you know, he likened the kingdom of heaven unto a mustard seed. And basically, when you brothers understand, a mustard seed is a very small, minute seed, which basically sprouts and it comes out of nowhere. When you brothers come into this thing, you see like, damn, we're low in number, we're few. And over time, it starts to sprout more and more and more and more. It's gonna take people by surprise. King, the people of this earth are gonna be like in the days of Noah. They're not gonna know where this came from. They're not gonna know who the people are. That's why the scriptures say in uh, Second Ezra, then will when it be revealed who are my chosen. Because the vast majority of people aren't gonna fully understand who the Lord's chosen really are. But if you are of that number, or even if you're called and you don't make it, you will still understand that you are the Lord's chosen because you howl about Shmi Shai, he's gonna do this. And I'm gonna come back to the scripture. Psalms, we'll go to 147, and we'll go to verse 19. It says, he shows his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye, Yahweh. You got to understand, one of the key aspects of the judgment of the Lord is that the last will be first, and the first will be last. And when you go back to that parable, in regards to the mustard seed, right, let's go back here real quick. So this is Matthew 13 and 31. It says another parable put he forth saying the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in the field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herds and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. It's gonna catch everybody by surprise, man. Ain't nobody thinking about the Israelites right now. Ain't nobody thinking that so-called blacks, Latinos, and the indigenous natives of the land are gonna sprout out and rule the entire world with, with quote unquote Jesus Christ? Them people don't think that. I mean, the vast majority of people is already given up faith in their false their false idol of Jesus Christ, of Caesar Borgir. But even if you were to come out there and tell these people the truth about the Bible and the understanding about it and how you so-called black men, right? You're gonna, you're gonna be the bottom of the bottom, you're gonna be at the top. They'll look at you like you stupid. Why do you think these women mock you why do you think these people laugh at you why do you think these people and i'm gonna get into some of these images but these people are literally mocking you and laughing at you because they don't understand it and they don't have faith let's go to the book of um salaki ezekiel 17 this is what i wanted to get and we'll go down we'll go to verse 22 it says thus saith the how i will also take of the highest branch of the high cedar and i will set it I will crop off on the top of his young twigs a tender one, and I will plant it upon a high mountain and imminent. In the mountain of the height of Israel I plant it, and it shall bring forth bowls and bear fruit, and be a goodly cedar, and under it shall dwell all fowl of every wing, and the shadow of the branches thereof shall they dwell. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, Yahweh, have brought down the high tree, Esau, Edom, and have exalted the low tree. And have dried up the green tree and have made the dry tree to flourish. Why? Because the vast majority of our people are the dry tree. We're the dry bones. We have no understanding. We're not flourishing right now. We're in a state of decay. We're in a state of decimation. We're in a state of starvation and dehydration. But the Lord is going to allow that dry tree to flourish. And he's going to allow that green tree, Esau, Edom, all the money, all the power, all the wealth. You know, he has access to all the women. They're going to be dried up. His highness, his high exaltation in this world is going to be brought all the way down. And those who are at the bottom are going to be brought up. And let me see if I can find it. Uh, the last would be first and the first would be last. I'll probably get that a little bit later, actually. So that's why you brothers got to have faith. Because if you don't have faith in the promises, if you don't have faith in what the Lord promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your faith is going to be rocked. Let's get this. Hebrew 11 and 1. It says, now faith is the thing of the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
And let's go down to a verse. Uh, let me see, Salaki. Verse uh, 6. Salaki 3 and 6. It says, Hebrews 11 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to Yahweh must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And the vast majority of our rewards are not going to come on this side, man. They're not. You know, a lot of these people is, is going to mock us. And, and you, I'm going to get into a lot of these other pictures, but that's why you brothers have to have faith. And you have to exalt the Lord, even when you're amongst the Gentiles and these people are mocking you, talking shit about you, saying that you don't know what you're talking about, saying that you're a conspiracy theorist. You know, I've had certain people who I was close with and, you know, I would tell them about the truth and they would sit here and try to come up with reasons why, you know, oh, you know, I, I know exactly what you're going through, bro. You know, you have this condition where you think that everything is based around you and you're special in these things. You start to believe in conspiracies. He didn't understand it. And I wasn't going to allow his non-belief stop me from continuing to believe in you. How about me out shot? Let's read this. This is Toby chapter 3, verse 13, verse 3. It says, confessing before the Gentiles, you children of Israel, for he has scattered us among them. There declares greatness and extol him before all the living, for he is our power, and he is the God, our father forever. And he will scourge us for our iniquities and will have mercy again and will gather us out of all nation among whom he has scattered. If you turn to him with your whole heart and your whole mind and deal upright before him, then will he turn unto you and will not hide his face from you. Therefore, see what he will do with you and confess him with your whole mouth and praise you how will might and extol the everlasting king. In the land of my captivity, do I praise him and declare his might and majesty to a sinful nation? O you sinners, turn and do justice before him. Who can tell if he will accept you and have mercy on you? I will extol my power and my soul shall praise the king of heaven and shall rejoice in his greatness. So even though you see these heathen, even though you see our own people who are in a heathenistic mind state, you can't let their non-belief and their lack of faith stop you from having faith, right? Now, I want to continue on. Because, you know, again, you got a lot of people saying just had a combo with Hebrew Israelites needed to say, I lost quite a few brain cells. They really think they spit in facts. Hey, man, look, we is speaking facts, man. Now, you speaking facts, you got the true understanding. There's a lot of false doctrines, a lot of false camps. But, you know, again, going into what Yahweh Shah said, right? John 8 and 44. You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So when a lot of you, you, so you jakes like to be called African-Americans and say that you can't, we all came from Africa and we're all one and we're all one nation under God, under Baal. You love to, you love to believe the lies of your father. You love to believe the lies of uh, the serpent. You love to believe, uh, believe the lies of Esau, Edom. You know what I mean? In verse 45, it says, and because I tell you the truth, you believe me not and a lot of people who choose to blatantly uh you know castigate and, and brush off the truth when everything is clear as day it's clear as a as a <laughs> it's clear as day man it's clear as a blue sky but at the end of the day they choose to not believe it so that's why they're not going to be able to see the things that you see verse 46 it says which of you convinces me of sin and if i say the truth why do you believe not me he that is of Yahweh heareth Yahweh's words. Therefore, hear them not, because you are not of Yahweh. So when you come and you speak to people and they look at you as if you're crazy and if you don't understand it, it's because the most I just don't want them to understand it, man. And you brothers can't take it seriously, but you got to be prepared to understand why these people will not like you and why these people will not want to be around you. This is John 15 and 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world will love its own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the world, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute me. I mean persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. And that's why you can tell that Christianity and Catholicism is clearly not the true doctrine, because the world don't hate Christians. They may sit here and speak on it and Say, oh, you believe in Jesus, but Christians love everybody. We don't love everybody. You know what I'm saying? Now, when it comes to be, us being persecuted by our own people, the scriptures say to bless those who persecute you. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to us understanding who we are 
in regards to the, our placement above all the nations, we understand that they're not gonna love us and that's perfectly fine because they're not meant to love us. They're meant to castigate us and try to per, uh, persecute and kill us and afflict us until the time where you have a shot return. So you brothers can't get too hard pressed and be angry and upset. Now I mean, hey man, this is what it is. And it's, and it's a great thing because it's fulfilling prophecy. And I wanna get this in uh, Luke chapter six real quick before I move on. This is Luke six and 21. It says, blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. So a lot of our own people will hate you, and castigate you, and separate from you. A lot of people that you were cool with in the world, when you start posting about the truth, you start changing your channel around, they start to separate from you. They never go on your lives. Your live might be channel banned. They might have unsubscribed and blocked you and, and cast you out as, oh, you're evil. You hate people. You hate women. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You hate the white man. You hate all these people, man. We don't hate. I mean, we hate who the Lord hates, man. And the Lord hates wickedness. So we hate wickedness, man. It, it is that simple. It is what it is. But we don't hate these people. But we love them enough to rebuke them and tell them the truth compared to just being quiet and secretly you know, thinking these things in our mind, but acting as if everything is perfectly fine. That's not what a man of the Lord does. So a lot of these people, when they hear the Israelites, they like to go against it, laugh, mock us, and scorn us. Not realizing that you're, you're, you're laughing at your life force, you know? You're laughing at your lifeline, man. You're laughing at everlasting life and, and the kingdom of paradise. You know, and of course, and of course, a lot of these tweets is, was with the so-called black woman. A lot of these Jake's women, they're not going to come around to the very end, bro. So brothers can't even really be too surprised with that. But I wanted to get into this, right? Because this dude is uh, mocking the Hebrew Israelite pose, man. Look at this. I think, I think he eat him right off the top of my head. Just, just based off of appearance. But, you know, a lot of brothers go out there and they do their stances and they got their they, 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 uh, they arms. Uh, how do I put it right? How do I put it the right way? But, you know, they kind of got like that military pose. A lot of people see that and they laugh. A lot of people say, oh, the Hebrew Israelites look like Power Rangers. A lot of the Hebrew Israelites look crazy. Man, when you go out there and you wear a garment, bro, people going to look at you like you wild. But it's because they don't understand it. Let's get this in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10. We are fools for Hamashiach's sake, but you are wise in Hamashiach. We are weak, but you are strong. You are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. And labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we blessed, being persecuted, we suffered it. Being defamed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not, the, not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. And you got to look back at the time when Hamashiach was on the scene, right? Hamashiach had sandals, Hamashiach had, you know, plain garment. And a lot of the people mocked him, man. Remember when Yahweh came into his own city, the people didn't believe on him and they castigated him. And he, that's why he said a prophet is not received in his own house. You know what I'm saying? And even when it comes to the vast majority of the cities, they rejected him. A lot of people probably did the same thing. Now, we don't know how exactly Yahweh was rolling with what he was doing with his disciples. We don't know exactly how it was. But we can just infer through the same spirit that's being placed upon us today. Now, when you brothers go out into the sea of people, when you go out into the the highways of traffic, the same looks that crazy looks that people give you, they probably gave the same looks to Yahweh Shah and his disciples. You think when Paul was wearing a garment and going to Rome and going to Greece and all these other places, all these other heathen and all these other strange multitudes of people and he was waking up the Israelites, you think that they looked at him, they probably gave him like he a damn fool, like he crazy as hell. But at the end of the day, we have to be fools for a Mashiach's sake. So when you see people calling you, oh, the Israelites look like Power Rangers, oh, the Israelites, screaming and yelling and you know they're doing these things they're strange people and you got people like this mocking the israelites at the end of the day man it is what it is man it says saw the black hebrew israelites today and then of course he's mocking you see what i'm saying because you got the hebrew israelites in the back doing their thing and you know he's just out here he, he out here slandering you know the, the whole uh awakening man but hey man like the scriptures say blessed are those who are weak now for oh let me see if i can get that scripture Let's go back to Luke chapter 6 real quick. Luke chapter 6. And we'll go... Um, let's see if I can find it. 
Oh, here it is right here. Luke 6 and 25 says, But woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. So this is a great example of that. You know, mocking the brothers in the back. You can kind of see them right here. You know, they out there in the back, you know, preaching, edifying and things like that. And of all people, you got a, a, a man who looked like a so-called uh, white person, an Edomite. You got you got a man who's probably an Edomite out here uh, mocking. And you see all the people liking it and commenting. And he said modern form of, I can't even read it, but probably somewhere they're talking shit about us. It is what it is. And then this is the one that I wanted to get on. This is the last one, right? Somebody who got a page, first and foremost, called Africa. So they probably think that they're African. They probably a Jake. <laughs> says, how come the Hebrew Israelites didn't break the curse on them yet? But the reason why we didn't break the curse on us yet is because we're not able to break the curses in our captivity. The Lord, Yahweh by Shem Shai, has to uplift the curses. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 1. It says, it shall come to pass if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahweh your God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord thy power will set you on high above all nations. And the blessing shall come upon you and overtake you if you shall hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy God. So basically, a blessing will come on us if we listen in heart and hearken unto the ways, the law, statutes, and commandments that the Lord, you know, uh, bestowed upon us through Moses. But of course, you understand the story. And you understand that all these curses will overtake us and they will be on us for a certain period of time. That's why when the scripture says in Deuteronomy, I think it's 28 and 68. It says, and Yahweh shall bring you into Egypt again with ships, and Egypt is synonymous with captivity. By the way whereof I spoke unto you, you shall see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. So while we're under these physical curses, mental curses, spiritual curses, no man can buy us. And what that means is that no man can free us. Only, only the power of Yahweh can free us. And through the judgment bestowed upon his son Yahweh Shai, he's the one who will break us from these curses when he returns, right? This is Revelation 1, verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. So Yahweh has the keys to torment. He has the keys to death. Whatever the Lord bestowed Yahweh Shai to judge, the specific man or the specific woman, is going to tell you if you have everlasting life or you have everlasting shame. If you can, you know, have that grace and that glory, or if you have hell and you have torment. So it's not up to us to break the curse. We can't break a spiritual curse. We can't do that. But when you, if you, if you are blessed and if you are chosen, if you are of that number, let's go to Revelation 21 and 4. It says, And Yahweh shall wipe away all tears from thy eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are past. So in that time period, when New Jerusalem is brought down from heaven, the Lord will wipe away our tears because all the things, all the trip, all the tribulation, the hard times, all the sorrow, all the pain, they're going to pass away. And we're going to be out there rejoicing with our power, Yahweh, and with our king, Yahweh Shai. And all these other nations who've been mocking and, and spitting on us and talking all this shit about us, they're going to be envying us because at the end of the day, they're going to finally understand that we were right all along. That's why you brothers got to have faith. And one of the main reasons why I'm doing this is so that way you brothers can understand why these people will come and afflict you and castigate you because that's just how it's supposed to be matthew 24 and 9 then shall they deliver you to be afflicted and shall kill you you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved so Iniquity will abound, the love of many will wax cold, many men, many women will fall out of the truth, many will be deceived by false prophets, and many will betray one another and hate one another due to the affliction and them coming out to, to persecute and kill us. So you brothers have to get used to that affliction and that pain and that hatred of these other nations and you know them clowning us and saying all these things because if not, you're not going to be able to take it when things get more and more tough as time goes by so lord willing i hope this lesson was edifying for you brothers i give all praises to you how about shimmy i was shy y'all brothers keep the faith until next time it's the brother ash i signing out